All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about exactly what the perfect golf grip is, where the pressure points are gonna be in your hands, some real keys to lining it up correctly, and I'm gonna go into a lot of detail on this. So let's first start out with the left hand and probably the most common piece of instruction that I see, and, and really, it, it doesn't matter to me. I want the, hand, the grip to be in the fingers. I don't mind if you have a really strong grip, meaning that you can have this hand turn way to the right. I don't mind if you have a weaker grip. There's been great players that have played with both of those. What you can't have happen is you can't have the grip above this red triangle, which is kind of the hinge point there. You notice it on the ball of my hand, and you'll see these pictures on the screen, but on the, the pad of my hand that's on the bottom of my hand opposite my thumb where that red triangle is, that two black lines that are in my hand are running below that triangle. Now, as I set up to this golf club, if I go ahead and set it down to my golf ball, if I was to hold it with my right hand, just kind of holding the club in place, as I set my left hand on there, that club or the side of the club is gonna be in that black palm. You could also think about making a hook with your fingers like this and putting that down on the club and the club would rest, the bottom of the club would rest in that hook. Now, when I do that, you'll notice that that red triangle is on top of the grip. And the point of that triangle I feel like is almost like a pivot point. It's not really pivoting there, but that's what it feels like to me. That's gonna be a hinge point for my club. So the tip of the triangle is on the tip of the club. The, cl the grip is in my fingers. Now I feel like I can really get some speed and momentum with this. The reason for this is I want to be able to hinge the club up and down to get some lag. So I have to be able to move my wrist this way with the club. If I get the club running too much up through the palm, so now the, the grip, if I was to hold the club there, the grip would be covering that red triangle as I take my grip. Now I can't hinge the club very much. You're gonna get a lot less speed if you can't hinge the club. So you can make a hook, put the club in it. The tip of the triangle is on top of the grip. And now I'm in a really powerful position to where I can hit this ball nice and long and straight at the same time. All right, so the piece number two, you notice that there's a couple of green pieces here, two green squares in my glove that are on my pinky and my ring finger in my left hand. That's where I'm gonna feel the pressure in my left hand. I don't wanna feel the pressure in my left thumb pushing that grip out. So if you're a caster, if you start to lose some lag from the top and you're throwing that club, your left thumb and your right thumb and index finger, those ones that are in red on my right hand, are pushing that club. So as I push with those that thumb here, that's kicking the club out. Kind of imagine the thumb doing this with my right hand. As I push with that left thumb, that's kicking the club out. I wanna feel like in the transition of the golf swing, those are almost doing nothing so that I can actually increase lag in the downswing. I have to be going this way with the club in the downswing if I wanna have lag. If I'm pushing that way, my lag is dead right away. So think about feeling the pressure in these two green squares on your left hand. Now, as I start down, I'm able to retain that. And as I come through the shot, the momentum of this club swinging out, I'm gonna feel that pressure in these bottom two fingers of that left hand. I'm gonna feel like I could almost take the club, grip it without my thumb and my index finger, just my pinky and my ring finger, and I can make a pretty good swing with my left hand. With my right hand, I wanna feel it in the pinky finger there too. It's not that in reality, the other fingers won't be doing something. It's that it's way too much in the thumbs and index fingers for most players. So in a nutshell, feel the pressure in your pinky fingers to keep it away from the thumbs, and that's gonna help you to get a whole heck of a lot more lag. Little tiny bit left, nice little fade there. All those are within a few feet of each other and hit pretty solidly. Now lastly here, we're gonna talk about this green line between my thumb and my index finger on my left hand and the two circles there. I'm the least, uh, um, I care the least about these two circles. I care a lot about this one line here. So as I look down at my grip, as I hold the club with my left hand, if I hinge that club up, I wanna see my thumb and my index finger cinched together. I wanna see that green line touching. If I let my thumb go down the club shaft or over on the right side of the club shaft like this, like I was holding it like a baseball bat, those two lines come apart 
and now you can see they're not going to have control of the club. That's a huge deal. And the reason for that is if I have that baseball type grip where my thumb and my index finger are apart, as I swing to the top, all this momentum is moving this way with my club. It's going to slide between the thumb and the index finger. It's going to slide between there and all of a sudden I'm going to lose stability of the club at the top of the swing. That's one part you don't want to lose stability of the club. I want to feel like I know exactly where that club is when I go to the top of the swing. So cinch those two fingers together. You could also think of it as, let me grab a tee here real quick out of my golf bag, but I'm going to feel like I am pinching a tee between my thumb and my index finger. So if I slid a tee between my thumb and my index finger, it'd be just like that. I could also grip the tee like I was going to hand it to you like this and my thumb and my index finger would be together there. That's the same feeling you want to have. Same thing on your right hand. I call it a short thumb because a long thumb means that my thumb is going down the grip, sliding down it, and now that, that, that green line is separated there. So pinch the thumb and the four fingers together. That's going to get the right hand, the left hand, everything really secure in there. It's like you're sucking all the air out of the grip, and now you have a ton of coverage on the golf grip here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up to it again. You'll see these lines are touching in my hand. If you look down those two green circles, I'd like to see those so that I know that I have a strong enough grip when I grip the club. If I'm turned too far under like this or my hands turn too far that way, I lose sight of those two green circles. That's the least important out of anything I've gone over here. That, but it still helps to have a little bit turn to the right. That way I can release the club a little easier. So here I have my great grip. I have my proper pressure points throughout the swing, and I'm gonna hit a nice clean shot here. All right, nice and solid there. And that's gonna help you a ton with your grip. Now, there's one more thing that's really important when feeling pressure in the golf swing. If I try to hit at this golf ball, pretty much everything we just talked about there isn't gonna work at all. So if I'm trying to hit at this golf ball, my club's going to release early, meaning it's straight up and down. The shaft of the club is straight up and down at contact. And all that stuff that we just talked about is out the window because the thumbs and four fingers are going to automatically push. I'm going to have way too much of a hit impulse trying to hit the golf ball rather than swing through it. What really matters here is to swing past the golf ball, something I call the straight line release. So if I put a ball kind of four feet in front of the ball that I'm hitting, four or five feet, I'm actually swinging toward that golf ball. I'll pull it a little bit back this way so you can see it in the camera. I'm swinging toward that golf ball in front. If I'm swinging toward the golf ball I'm hitting, I'm gonna cast, I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna be inconsistent. If I'm swinging toward that golf ball in front, I'm gonna have shaft lean at impact. I'm gonna compress that golf ball and then the club's gonna release toward this golf ball three or four or five feet in front of the one that I'm actually hitting. That's what I call the straight line release. And if you can teach yourself to release toward that point, contact gets a whole heck of a lot easier. These pressure points in your grip make a whole lot more sense. Again, if I'm hitting at the golf ball, throw it all out the window, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna play a preview of one of my best straight line release videos. I'm gonna talk about the proper way to do this so that you can get started on it. And that way you can get your really good grip and then you can learn how to use those pressure points properly through contact. All you need to do is go ahead and click the cards that pop up somewhere on the screen here. And don't worry if you don't see the little circle card button up there. Go ahead and go down to the description below, click the link there, and you'll get instant access to that video. I can't wait to share with you the straight line release. It's gonna really change your game. Let's go ahead and get started. A common misconception I see is that we wanna create lag and we just wanna hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're gonna talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms, so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson, releasing the club 45 past, 
And the reason we're going to see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're going to see tons.